I just wanted to spend a few minutes on the concept of change fatigue, and again, back to the science of change management, to recognize, and again, important, I think, when working both with people who work with practices and within practices, to recognize up front that change fatigue is a predictable, common, and just, uh, hopefully avoidable reaction to multiple changes over time. Um, it's really not the same thing as being resistant to change, but it's a very, very uh, common and predictable reaction when people are undergoing lots of changes, particularly made worse or exacerbated when, again, that link to the overall vision is either not there or broken or forgotten about. When uh, we're trying to do too many things at once, when people feel like the every time they come in, right, the priority is changing, um, or people don't feel like they have a voice in what's happening. They feel like the change is being done to them instead of, instead of being involved with the changes that are being taken on in the practice. So um, it, it is on the one hand predictable, on the other hand, there are certainly uh, steps that can be taken to help minimize um, uh, the, that sense of overwhelm. Um, and also to recognize that there is a predictable cycle, right? Uh, you can see here, um, uh, and this is from the uh, TransferMed initiative that the AAFP led uh, several years ago, that it's pretty predictable that you start out, uh, people are enthusiastic, could call that the honeymoon period or uninformed optimism to, oh my gosh, look how bad the data is, can we possibly be that bad, informed pessimism to, okay, we're trying this, we're making some changes, we're seeing some improvement, informed optimism, and then hopefully um, all the way to completion. So recognizing at some point not to get overwhelmed, you know, when people are feeling down to say, okay, we're, we're in this stage and we're going to keep moving. And then importantly, recognizing that there are some ways to um, help either minimize or ideally avoid that change fatigue um, that you can see listed here. So shifting from, again, one initiative project-based thinking to a whole systems approach, recognizing, again, it's not a sprint but a marathon, really trying to record the changes and show progress, change mapping or keeping a, a book or portfolio along so that pe people can go back and, and realize, okay, we're in this, we're in this downtime now, but boy, look at the changes that we've made. Uh, look at the impact of the work that we're doing. Uh, making sure that clear outcomes are identified for the changes that you're trying to make and make sure that there is sufficient time, that you're not trying to do things in an unrealistic time frame or five changes at once. And then certainly, again, this notion of people being engaged and having a voice so that they're not feeling that change is being done to them. Um, this is another framework, again, from uh, TransferMed uh, with some, I think, some very helpful ideas in terms of trying to minimize that sense of overwhelm or change fatigue, keeping it simple, focusing on communication, connecting the pieces, um, really having a unified uh, front. Again, those visible leaders who are championing the change and serving as um, cheerleaders really um, over time as people get discouraged or confused or uh, wanting to go in different directions. Um, and I, I like this last one particularly, confront hard realities but keep hope alive. 